Hi everyone, welcome back to Tech Travers. This little box is the Aya Neo Retro Mini PC AM01S, a compact retro inspired Windows PC that Aya Neo was kind enough to send over for review. As you probably guessed from the design, this is part of Aya Neo's remake line, a series of handheld and mini PCs that take classic tech aesthetics and mash them together with modern hardware, cleaner lines, and way more performance under the hood. The AM01S is essentially the follow-up to the original Aya Neo AM01 that launched around this time last year. That one had a very obvious old-school Macintosh vibe that won over a lot of retro-loving tech enthusiasts. This time around, Aya Neo has upgraded more than just the internals. Where the previous model just had a blank plastic panel on top, the AM01S adds a 4-inch multi-angle flip touchscreen. You can use this secondary display to tweak things like fan profiles, TDP and performance modes through IA space, keep an eye on temperatures and system stats, or just treat it as a tiny second monitor in Windows for widgets, media controls, or whatever you feel like cramming onto a 4-inch screen. But more on that little screen in just a moment. I haven't even unboxed this thing yet. Alright, let's start the unboxing. The first thing you see when you lift the lid isn't the PC itself, but a sleek black cardboard sleeve with an outline drawing of the mini PC printed on top. Inside that sleeve you find a quality control certificate and a small manual booklet. Nothing fancy, but it's nice that Aya Neo keeps it neatly packaged instead of just tossing papers in the box. Underneath, sitting tight in the foam insert, it's the star of the show, the Aya Neo AM01S, shown off in all its retro glory. It's not wrapped in plastic, just perfectly molded into the protective foam, which makes it feel a little more premium and presentation focused. But let me just set the PC aside for now and check what else is hiding underneath, because Aya Neo actually includes a surprising amount of accessories. First, you get the power brick along with a modular cable system and four regional plug adapters, UK, US, Asia and EU. Super convenient if you travel or if you're importing this from another region. There's also HDMI cable included, so you can plug it straight into a display right out of the box. Then we also get some unexpected extras. Spare magnets for the small metal decorative plate on the front of the PC, it's purely for aesthetics, but Aya Neo even gives you the option to tweak the look with an extra interchangeable faceplate piece, letting you customize the style a bit while keeping that retro feel. And finally, tucked in at the bottom is a tiny screwdriver kit complete with spare screws and a couple of plastic pry tools. Basically everything you need if you ever want to open up the system later to upgrade the RAM or SSD. It's surprisingly generous unboxing for such a small device and it gives off that premium boutique feel that Aya Neo is clearly going for with the whole retro but modern theme. Now speaking of opening it up, let's take a really quick look inside. With just a few screws removed, the bottom plate comes off and you get a pretty straightforward access to the M2 SSD slot and the RAM slots. That means upgrading storage or memory down the line is actually very doable, even if you're not a hardcore PC builder. So yeah, in terms of upgradability, it's nice to see that Aya Neo isn't treating this completely like a sealed box. If you go for a smaller SSD today or want more RAM later, you got some options. Speaking of RAM and SSD, let's break down what's actually inside the little box. The unit I have here is powered by AMD Ryzen 7 8845HS, an 8-core 16-thread chip that runs up to around 5.1 GHz boost clock. It's part of AMD's latest 8000 series lineup built on the Zen 4 architecture, so you're getting great single core performance and integrated Radeon 780M graphics, which I'll definitely be testing later. You can configure the AM01S all the way up to the Ryzen AI9 HX370, but the 8845HS version is probably the sweet spot for most users, balancing power draw and thermals while still being strong enough for some serious gaming and emulation. For memory it uses DDR5 at 5600 MHz and you can upgrade it yourself up to 64GB. Storage wise you got an M2 2280 PCIe 4.0 slot that supports up to 8TB, plus an additional M2 2242 SATA slot for a secondary drive. Connectivity is also solid, Wi-Fi 6E, Bluetooth 5.2 and dual 2.5 Gigabit Ethernet ports, so you can use it as a desktop media server or even a compact LAN powerhouse. 
for display output there are two HDMI ports plus the dual USB 4 Type-C port, which is supporting DisplayPort 1.4 and power delivery up to 100 watts. Cooling is handled by a 65 watt high pressure turbofan with a dual copper heat pipe setup, keeping temps in check even under heavy loads. Now price wise, this specific Ryzen 7 8845HS model is listed at 499 USD for early bird backers, expected to rise to about 539 USD retail once the crowdfunding campaign ends. Higher end configurations with the HX370 and more storage or RAM naturally go up from there, while a bare bone version where you add your own memory and SSD will come in a bit cheaper. So overall the specs are impressive for something this size and the flexibility to choose between bare bone or fully loaded models is great depending on your budget and tinkering preferences. When you start the AMO1S for the very first time, you're greeted with the standard Windows setup. Nothing fancy and I actually skipped that part in this video because well, we've all seen it a thousand times. And once you've gone through the basics, the system boots straight into Windows 11, and pre-installed you'll find Aya Space, Aya Neo's own software suite that ties all of their handles and mini pieces together. It's kind of a hybrid between a performance tuner and a game launcher, letting you to control fan speeds, TDP profiles and system modes, all from a unified interface. And now here's where it gets clever. When you're using an external display, Aya Space automatically puts a compact control dashboard on that little built-in 4-inch screen, showing temps, CPU loads, fan speeds and quick toggles for performance modes. But the moment you unplug your main monitor, that tiny flip screen becomes the primary display. It actually turns into a fully functional Windows desktop, and yes, you can technically use it that way. It's not exactly ideal for productivity, especially if, like me, you got some sausage fingers, but it does work. You can open apps, navigate menus, and even shut down the system right from that little panel. It's a fun mix of novelty and utility, and it really sets the AM01S apart from every other mini PC out there. Something else that really sets the AMO1S apart from other mini PCs in this price and form factor category is the performance. And let's start with emulation, because honestly, this thing is a beast. Beginning with Wii U through CMU, the AMO1S handles the high-end side of emulation shockingly well. With just a couple of simple tweaks, you can bump the resolution from native 720p all the way up to 1080p, and it still maintains smooth, consistent frame rates. Breath of the Wild, the big one that everyone talks about, runs right around 60fps in native resolution, and even at 1080p it stays surprisingly playable, hovering in the 35-45fps to 45 FPS range depending on the scene. For a tiny retro-styled mini PC, this is extremely impressive. And I also tested Wind Waker HD and Josh's Wally World, both running in 1080p without any weird stutters or dips, everything feels responsive, clean and stable, totally in line with what you'd expect from a much larger system. And a small tip for everyone jumping into Wii U emulation, CMU has a massive library of community-made graphic packs and tweaks for basically every major title. These can unlock higher frame rates, improve visuals, adjust resolution, scaling and give you all sorts of extra fine-tuning options. So if you want to squeeze even more performance out of this hardware, definitely take advantage of that. Moving over to the successor, Nintendo Switch, the AMO1S handles this way better than you might expect from such a tiny machine. Using the Eden emulator, Tears of the Kingdom actually runs in a genuinely playable state right out of the box. With the default setting, it's already stable enough to explore, fight and glide around the game without the game turning into a slideshow. And with a few community tweaks and optimizations, you can probably push the performance even further. Now, I'm keeping the gameplay blurred here for obvious reasons, but trust me, the out-of-box experience is solid, responsive and surprisingly smooth for a mini PC in this price range. And finally, let's talk PlayStation 3 emulation, something that historically has been pretty demanding even on full-size desktop PCs. Using RPCS3, the AMOMS actually performs much better than you'd expect. Skate, the game I tested, runs smoothly, consistently and totally playable from start to finish. Controls feel responsive, physics behave as they should and I never ran into any weird stutters or hangs that older or weaker systems tend to struggle with. And just like with the Switch, there's a lot of performance still on the table if you're willing to tweak your settings on a per game basis. RPCS3 has profiles, recommended configurations and community settings that can significantly improve frame rate and smoothness depending on the title. So even with just simple out of the box settings, PS3 emulation on the AMO1S is absolutely solid and with a little tuning it only gets better. And to round things off, let's talk some about AAA PC gaming, because this is where I was honestly a bit surprised by how capable the AMO1S actually is. 
Both Metal Gear Solid Delta, Snake Eater and Horizon Forbidden West run in a genuinely playable state right out of the box. You're not getting ultra settings, of course not, but on reasonable presets with a balanced resolution scaling the experience is absolutely smooth enough to enjoy. And just like with emulation there's still a ton of performance left to unlock if you're willing to tweak things. AMD's FSR upscaling works wonders on integrated graphics and with the right combination of resolution scaling, FSR modes and a few visual adjustments you can probably push these big titles noticeably further than their default settings. So while this tiny retro style box isn't going to replace a high-end gaming tower, it absolutely can deliver a solid AAA gaming experience, especially if you don't mind a bit of fine-tuning. So yeah, after spending some time with the Aya Neo AM01S, I can honestly say that this is one of the most fun and surprisingly capable mini PCs I've tested in a long time. It nails the retro aesthetics, the performance is way beyond what the size suggests, and that little flip screen adds a level of charm and functionality you just don't get anywhere else. So if you're into emulation, compact gaming setups or just want a tiny Windows machine that looks great on a desk or TV stand, this one is absolutely worth keeping an eye on. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like, drop a comment and subscribe to the channel as it really helps me out. Thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.